The lunar eclipse is behind and the solar eclipse is April 8th. The two weeks between them can be loaded with energy. So check out my new video analyzing both eclipses, looking backward and forward. It's like a buy me a coffee, but you get a video too. Funastrology.com, right at the top. And thank you for your support. Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller along with Robert Glasscock. And we're going to take one of your questions. This one came in through our SpeakPipe, which is up at the top left of the FunAstrology.com website, where you can leave us a voice message just like this. Is it possible for someone who is born on November 22nd, shortly after midnight, and has their son in Scorpio, is it possible for them to be a Sagittarius since Sagittarius starts on November 22nd? Well, you are taking me back to the days where I began studying astrology and had to hand calculate every chart using a table of houses and the ephemerides and so on. The ephemerides that we use in astrology have been calculated by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And the only way to tell if you're born so-called on the cusp is to calculate the chart very carefully if you're doing it by hand. And I'm grateful that I started out that way because we did not have computers when I began. Today, the computer programs calculate this. But the answer is no. Your son is either in Scorpio or it's in, in Sagittarius. It can be a 2959 Scorpio, but it's still in Scorpio. Or it can be at zero degrees one minute of Sagittarius, but it is still in Sagittarius. So the only way to know is to exactly calculate the horoscope. And today with computers, they do that automatically in seconds where it used to take quite a bit of time to calculate a single horoscope. So the answer is no. The sun is either in one or the other. Everybody likes to say I'm born on the cusp and that's okay. But when you begin to get into solar arcs where you're advancing the sun roughly one degree per year, but if you're doing real solar arcs, it's not always exactly one degree for a year. It can be 59 minutes or it can be a degree in one or two minutes. And over a lifetime, when you get to be 50 or 60, that little incremental difference between an exact one degree per year can accumulate. So if you have the sun wrong at birth, the solar arcs will be wrong. And that difference can be significant as you get older. So, no, the short answer to this, and I learned this from Linda Goodman back when I first met and knew her for about four years, the sun is only, it's in, it's in one sign or the other. A lot of interpretive programs, especially, a lot of these computer-generated reports and things that people order all the time will roll a 29-degree sun in, they will look at the next sign as well. So are you saying that that's improper interpretation? I don't really know what that even means. They roll it into the next sign. If you have, it's the same with house cusps. If you have 29 degrees, I use equal houses. So if you have 29 degrees on the house cusps, that is still the sign that rules that house, even though the bulk of the house contains the next sign. And you do have to take that into account. And you can do it interpretively, but nonetheless, if you have, let's say, 29 degrees Gemini rising, Mercury is your life ruler because it rules the planet that rules your ascendant. But the bulk of the first house is going to be Cancer. But nonetheless, the front door to every house will have 29 degrees of that sign. It makes for a more complicated person in that what seems to be let's say on the first cusp, Gemini rising, in fact, the bulk of their first house is contains the sign of cancer. So even though their life is ruled by Mercury, because it rules the Gemini ascendant, they are a lot more emotionally guided than, say, a person that has 10 degrees Gemini rising. Do you see what I mean? So you can figure it in terms of interpretation, but as far as the actual position of the ascendant or the position of a sun of a sun or any other planet, it will be in the sign that it's in and not the next one. So it can get very confusing when you try to incorporate both. 
And Linda was the one that basically, she was so emphatic about everything, being a quadruple Aries. Nope, the sun is either in this sign or it's in that sign. It can't be. It's one or the other. All right. And she had learned that from her teacher in New York, who was a man named Lloyd Cope. And they're right. The sun is technically either in one sign or another sign, if it's on the cusp like that, like this woman's asking about. And the only way to know that is to make sure you've exactly calculated the horoscope correctly, which, of course, today computers do for you. I don't have an example in mind, so this is walking on some pretty thin ice and dangerous territory here, but it seems like, and I'm just wondering how many people will chime in to say, oh, this is me, this is me, that they are the one sign of the 29 degree sun, but they certainly feel the characteristics of the next sign strongly. Maybe they're an anomaly. I don't know. But have you run across that in readings? I mean, you've been doing this for 65 years. Goodness sakes. Certainly, if there was a pattern there, you would have seen it. Are there people out there who might be an exception to this rule who would say, oh, no, oh, no, I'm far more the next sign? Yes, all the time. And you have to realize this is one of the paradoxes in astrology. We are all made up of the same planets and the same 12 signs and the same aspects. We're in just different configurations. So, in fact, we can all identify with all of it because we have the, you know, men have a female component. Men have Venus. Men have the moon. Women have a male component. They have a sun. They have Mars. So we can, it's like a Rorschach test almost. It can be anything. And you can identify with, I, when I first started out, I thought my moon was in Pisces. I was calculating the chart wrong. But I thought it was in very late Pisces, and I could identify with that. No, it's in early Aries. My moon is actually at three degrees Aries, and I can certainly identify with that. And in fact, physiologically, that was everybody's heard this. I have the moon in the third house in Aries at three degrees, and I do indeed have a childhood scar. You can't see it on the left side of my head or face, which I read in an old book. Now, that was a physical fact. I couldn't argue with that. So you can, we can all identify with any of these positions, and it can wind up being very nebulous uh, because we want to. We may not like having Venus in Virgo, so if it's early degree, oh, I'd rather much have, uh, much rather have Venus in Leo. So we'll think, oh, well, maybe it's on the cusp, and I can cheat. So it's a matter of we're all made up of the same stuff, just in different proportions and in different emphases. Planets that are angular, for example, are stronger than planets that are cadent or succedent. So we, we do have the different emphases, but we can identify with anything, really, when we read it. And so unless you've got a, a calc an accurately calculated chart, it's uh, it's very difficult sometimes when planets are near one cusp or the other to decide which one it's in. But technically, they are in one or the other sign. So I don't know if this helps. But, yeah, it's a, it's a real issue with astrology, especially with those who are just starting out. Because they can't, oh, I, I can feel my Venus in this sign, even though it says it's in the next sign. But I feel them both. Is that okay? Fine. You've got to work through all that on your own in terms of your just experience with astrology over time and reading for a variety of charts really to finally grasp what it's showing you and again i come back to it's either in one sign or another one it's not in both at once okay and you mentioned solar arcs which of course is a progressed chart moving the chart forward from the time of our birth into the present tell us so that we get this in our mind because i think this could be a really good visual or the importance of this how does an if you interpreted that into the next area or when the chart gets off, how does that show up in the progressed solar arc chart? All right. In solar arcs, basically what you're doing is you're taking the progressed sun and subtracting the natal sun from that to get a number of degrees and minutes. And that's called the solar arc. And you add that solar arc to every planet and point in the birth chart. Now, it depends on the time of year when you're born. We have signs of long ascension and signs of short ascension. And at different seasons of the year, the sun, the sun's apparent motion can be a little more than one degree per day, or it can be a little less than one degree per day. So when you begin to advance that sun to get to age 50, let's say, that little discrepancy 
can be multiplied by 50 and it can affect the position of the solar arc or the progressed sun accordingly. So the solar arc or the progressed sun will advance, depending on the season of the year you're born in, a little more than one degree a year or a little less than one degree a year. And that begins to accumulate the older that you get. So it can throw the the one degree per year thumbnail sketch. It's easy to do that mentally. But in fact, the exact solar arc may be a little more than one degree per year or a little less than one degree per year. And that will, over time, throw the exactness of solar arc aspects off if you're just using a straight one degree per year calculation. Yeah, it could throw it into another house or sign completely Mm -hmm. over Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Unless you were a 29 and then it could do it by the time you're about three. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. I got to tell you, that's one reason. I, I mean, I am grateful for computer programs. We all are because they save so much time and they're exact. The thing that I miss for new astrologers, especially, I we all had to hand calculate charts when I began. And I had to carry a briefcase around because of the books involved, the time changes in the United States, the time changes in the world, the tables of houses, all of these things. These are hardcover books. Uh, and it took, when I first started, it would take me almost an hour to calculate a chart. You're using logarithms and so on. It was an amazing amount of math. But still, today, it, and, but sadly, I couldn't calculate hand calculate a chart today if it saved my life depended on it. I've been using computers for so long. And so today, astrologers have never learned to set a chart up by hand. One of the things I liked about doing that, you got blank chart forms. So you would have to hand draw the planets and the signs and all of that. And what that did as you were setting up the horoscope, it established this mind-body physical connection between your brain and the horoscope itself. So that by the time you had calculated it, you were physically invested in that horoscope as well as mentally. And that's not true today makes you really respect what the ancients did doesn't it yeah oh more than that my friend when you're using a pencil to draw a chart that's the element of lead and that's saturn metaphysically when you draw a chart you are giving birth in three-dimensional physical reality of a mental concept the horoscope for example so you're using a, a lead pencil which is three-dimensional and a physical object, to draw it on paper with your hand. So you're involving all of the neuromuscular connections between your hands and fingers and your brain and mind and your knowledge of astrology to physically create, physically give birth to a horoscope. Today, click. You enter the birth information, the date, time, and place, click, boom. It prints out a horoscope, which you had nothing to do with creating physically. It's a whole different metaphysical process. Yeah, it is sterile in comparison, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for answering this, for setting us straight, and showing us a really good reason why we need to pay attention to that exact degree and minute if we know our birth time precisely. All right. If you'd like to talk to Robert, his reading information is in the show notes along with all the other things that we have going on here. And our Buy Me a Coffee link is in there as well if you'd like to support the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock.